चलो हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग द बेसिक फंक्शन ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इज टू टेक द ऑक्सीजन फ्रॉम एटमोस्फेयर एंड प्रोवाइड इट टू द टिश्यू सो दिस इज द प्राइमरी फंक्शन ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस प्राइमरी फंक्शन देर आर सर्टन फंक्शन विच आर इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट दे आर डन बाय द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम and these functions are known as non respiratory functions of respiratory system so what are they the first one it is known as the air conditioning what it is it is the air conditioning what is this air conditioning the air that we inhale the same quality of air doesn't reach what is called the respiratory zone so there are certain changes there are certain changes occur into the quality of air and that is then known as these changes are then known as air conditioning so what changes occur into air conditioning number 1 there is the humidification of air and number 2 the air is brought to the temperature of body that is 37 degrees celsius so first we see how humid air is humidified when we take the air in that time very often the air is dry air strikes with the over the mucus of the nose then the mucus of the sort terminates and ultimately goes over the pharynx and the larynx trachea and it is then it is then exposed to what is called the mucus that is covering the that is covering the uh, ciliary epithelium this mucus it goes on it goes on adding the water molecules into the air and thus there is the increasing uh, increase in the partial pressure of what partial pressure of water in the air and this brings about the humidification of air so this is how the air is humidified that is this is how the water molecules are added into the air second function the inhaled air by the time it reaches the respiratory bronchiole it is brought to the temperature of body and how this is done so we take one example supposing this is the month of december the atmospheric temperature is around say 10 degrees celsius we are taking in the cold air but by the time it reaches the respiratory uh, zone the temperature is increased to 37 degrees celsius so how it occurs cold air when it enters into the upper respiratory tract it is exposed to the mucosa it is exposed to the sub mucosa also in the sub mucosa blood vessels are present these blood vessels they contain the blood the temperature of blood is 37 degrees celsius and by the process of conduction and by the process of convection the heat is transferred from the blood vessel into the air and the temperature of air goes on increasing increasing and by the time the air reaches the respiratory unit the temperature of the air is taken to the temperature of what body that is 37 degrees celsius so these two changes they go reverse happens when there is the summer the surrounding temperature is 45 degrees celsius and that time the heat from the air that is heat from the warm air it goes through the mucosa into the blood and it is then carried by the blood and the temperature of the air then decreases by the time it reaches the respiratory respiratory zone so this is known as air conditioning and this is very important function of the respiratory passageway second function second function is the respiratory system it participates into the defense mechanism how it participates in defense mechanism imagine that you are working in the environment which is full of dust both dusty environment hai to is it that the inhaled air which is having plenty of dust molecules are they entering or are they reaching up to the respiratory bronchiole answer is no by the time the air reaches the respiratory bronchiole or alveolus the air is filtered and it is made pure how it happens the dust particles they are of varying size some are more than 10 micron some are less than 10 micron the dust particles who are of the size more than 10 micron 
they are trapped by the hairs of the nose. They are also trapped by the mucus which is surrounding the turbinate, turbinates that are present in the nose. Then particles, that is the dust particles we, which are in the range of 2 micron to 10 micron, now they cannot be filtered by this uh, nose defense mechanism. These particles, that is 2 to 10 micron size particles, they can, they reach into the trachea and the bronchi. And there, by this, uh, by this mucociliary system, these particles are trapped and the uh, upward beating of the cilia, they cause the, uh, these dust particles to come into the pharynx and from there they are either cuff out or they are then soldered in the uh, GIT. So this is how the particles are then taken care uh, in the tracheobronchial tree by mucociliary system. Now there are certain particles which are the, which are of the size less than two micron. They escape the defense of nose. They escape the defense of the mucociliary system, and they can reach up to what is called the alveoli. When these particles of the size less than two micron they reach the alveoli. These particles are then phagocytized by the macrophage and name of that macrophage is known as alveolar macrophage. So even at the side of the alveolar where gaseous action is occurring, there is a defense mechanism available in the form of alveolar macrophage. So after phagocytizing, these particles or small particles, the air that is left into the alveolus, it is pure air. But if you are exposed to such dust, part, dusty environment for many months or year, then this defense mechanism overwork and sometimes it may fail and that may result into the chronic disease of the lung. Now, third function, can you imagine the third function that uh, uh, respiratory system, it participates into the blood pressure regulation. How it participates in the, in the blood pressure regulation? The, during the regulation of blood pressure, the angiotensinogen that is present in the blood is converted into angiotensin 1. Once it is converted into angiotensin 1, and we know that angiotensin 1 is not the active agent, it must be converted into angiotensin 2 and which then ultimately leads to the regulation of blood pressure. So how angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2, when this blood, when this blood with the angiotensin, angiotensin 1, it passes through the pulmonary capillary, the pulmonary capillary is lined by the endothelial cells and these endothelial cells at their apices, they have the enzyme, name of that enzyme is the angiotensin 1 converting enzyme. And when this angiotensin strikes over this angiotensin converting enzyme, it is converted into the active product and that is known as the angiotensin 2. When this blood comes out of the lung into the systemic circulation, then this angiotensin 2, it participates into the regulation of blood pressure. So this is the third function. Fourth function. What can be the fourth function? Where the we discuss two important functions number one the air conditioning and the second one is the defense one because of this air condition air conditioning we can have the next function when we exhale the air we are exhaling the warm air that is there is loss of heat from the body so respiratory system indirectly it participates into the temperature regulation next function when we exhale, we are exhaling the humidified air, that is the air which is containing water molecules. So there is a loss of water which cannot be seen by, by ourselves and this is, known as, you know, this is known as respiratory loss of water. Over 24 hours, around 250 ml of water is lost by this mechanism. So respiratory system by this way it also participates into the water balance of the body. So temperature regulation and then followed by the uh, water balance, regulation of water balance in the body. Then 
what is the next function which is not concerned with the respiration it is the voice production the vocal cords are present into the larynx and because of them we uh, we can produce the voice and thus during the act of expiration the voice is produced then any function smell because of presence of olfactory epithelium in the nose we can pursue various smell so olfaction is one more function of the uh, one more non respiratory function of the respiratory system then so the because of during expiration co2 is also going out and because of the loss of co2 there is the balance of ph in our body so respiratory system it also is also responsible for maintaining the ph of body so we just enumerate the non respiratory function number 1 the conditioning of the air number 2 the defense mechanism number 3 it is the uh, converting the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 then the second one is the uh, second one is the temperature regulation then the water balance mechanism then next one is the ph maintenance and voice production then the smell these are the important functions which these are the important non respiratory functions of the lung thank you